Circle centers for Cousins, a shot, and he scores. Dylan Cousins makes it 3-0 left. Lethbridge. Byram going to take it coast to coast on a backhand, scores! The blue line, Vandalies that effort, tip, scores! Carson Folk is Mr. Teddy Bear! A deflect! He scores! It's over! It's over! Game 7! Overtime! Hero! Welcome to this week's episode of the WHL Podcast. I'm Zach Hodder, the Manager of Player Development, and your host for this week's episode. we got a pretty good show for you today. We have two of our top prospects heading into this year's NHL Entry Draft, whenever that ends up being, as well as one of the most unique defensemen in the Western Hockey League, just entered his 20-year-old campaign with the Kamloops Blazers. But before all that, it's time for the news and notes. The Western Hockey League has announced that the WHL's U.S. division will begin the 2021 WHL regular season on Friday, March 19th. This follows an update from the Washington State regarding sport activities, COVID-19 requirements that was issued on February 1st, which allows the WHL to return to play in Washington State. The WHL's five U.S. teams, the Everett Silvertips, Portland Winterhawks, Seattle Thunderbirds, Spokane Chiefs, and Tri-City Americans, will play games exclusively within the division during the 2021 regular season. Further details on the WHL's COVID-19 protocols will be announced at a later date. The Prince George Cougars are pleased to announce that they have signed 2004-born goaltender Ty Young to a WHL standard player agreement. Young was originally drafted by the Cougars in the 8th round, 158th overall, of the 2019 WHL draft. The 16-year-old goaltender started the 2021 season with the under-18 AAA Lethbridge Hurricanes in the Alberta Elite Hockey League, and in three games, Young was undefeated, registering a one win, zero losses, and two ties record, with a 233 goals against and a 926 save percentage. The 6'380 pound netminder was the sixth player from the 2019 WHL draft class that the Cougars signed. That's it for the news and notes this week. For everything WHL, you can go to our website, whl.ca, or follow us on Twitter at the WHL. Robertson spun around by McCallum. Gunther trying to chop the puck free, can't do it. Sent in front by Purple. They score! Quickly in front to chase on and one time did home. It's four to two. Today I'm joined by Abbotsford BC native and Brandon Week Kings forward. He wears number 19. Is he going to be Joe Sackick? Maybe. Maybe he is the next Joe Sackick. We don't know, but what we do know is last season in the Western Hockey League, in 60 games, he scored five goals, added 10 assists, and had 15 points. But most surprisingly, this guy, eight penalty minutes in 60 games. Must be a smart player. We will find out. It is Jake Chase on. Jake, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, just staying busy. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty fortunate enough to not have too many uh, ice times or anything shut down. So just trying to stay ready. And if we uh, if we have a season coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks, hopefully I'll be able to jump in at full speed. Obviously, a little bit of a mental grind right now. The past you know ten months, realistically, without hockey, without team sports, without having that camaraderie that you have. What have you been doing to to stay sharp and to stay ready for when we do start the season? Yeah, I think uh, I've uh, been pretty lucky. The, there's a Chilock Chiefs of the BCHL have kind of brought me in as a rostered player for their club. And uh, yeah, obviously things worked out between Brandon and them with communicating that. And I've been able to step into their roster and been able to keep kind of staying in the team environment. And yeah, that'll help. I mean, the being around the guys is obviously the, the best case scenario in any locker room. So uh, yeah, the fact that I could jump in with them and stay busy has been really uh, fortunate for me. Well, the Chiefs are one of the best teams in the BCHL. I think they won the RBC Cup in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, it was a tremendous opportunity for you. And a big thank you to the Chiefs for allowing some of our players to come out with them. Because I know Graham Sward also got to go out for a couple of skates with them as well. But, you know, when you when you look back on last season, your first year in the league, there's a lot of adjustments you have to make. There's a lot of details of the game that get introduced to you in training camp that you need to understand and pick up quickly. And what was the biggest adjustment that you had to make to be an everyday player in the Western Hockey League? Yeah, I think just uh, just understanding my role of where I was kind of brought into the team and uh, what I was going to contribute contribute on a nightly basis. And obviously times get tough as one of the younger guys and uh, your game, it may not be always going the way that you want it to, but I mean, just learning how to uh, carry yourself as a junior player and always trying to just take a step forward each day was most important for me. And yeah, I felt as the season went on, coaching staff and the players around me really helped me uh, 
settle into my game and uh, hopefully getting ready for the next season. It'll take off from there. As you know, in the Western Hockey League, you almost have two separate leadership groups on a team. You've got your 18 to 20s leadership group, and then you've got your 17 and 16s, your high school kids leadership group. Last season, 16-year-old figuring out Brandon, figuring out the city, the school. This season, you're going to be a leader on that high school leadership group. What do you think you need to do to be a grid leader for those guys that are coming into your club this year? Yeah, I think I think being comfortable um, to a certain aspect is the most important thing in, in junior lifestyle. I mean, you don't want to get comfortable with where your game's at or uh, or that that side of things, but just uh, knowing that you're meant to be there and you're, you, you have a place on the team is important. And I think I think just creating a good morale in the dressing room between the young guys, asking them, uh, asking them how they're doing and how their family is. That's just all, it goes a long way day by day. I mean, not seeing them gets tough sometimes. So if you can have uh, a good conversation about them or kind of staying, staying upbeat, that's uh, that's the most important thing. And if I can bring that, that'll be a, that'll be a plus to things. Yeah, absolutely. It will. And that's another part of that culture that's trying to be developed in Brandon is passing it down from generation to generation. You have three first round picks that could be on the team this year uh, from the 2019 WHL draft. So you could have a tough job ahead of you corralling all those, those 16 year old kids around the halls at the high school there in Brandon. But, you know, when you talked about the coaches before you had a coach last year, who is a, you know, he had a tremendous NHL career as a player. He's coached in the NHL as a coach. He's back with the Winnipeg Jets. And he was your coach last year. That's Dave Lowry. What did you learn from Dave and how did he help you progress through that first season? Yeah, I mean, Dave's played so many years pro and has coached pro. So I think just having that pro pet, uh, pedigree in the room has just really helped me. It, it really shows what it takes and uh, how hard you have to compete on a daily basis. And um, yeah, he brought, he brought a lot of grit in, into, into our team and we became a pretty tough team to play. So I think uh, that's maybe a side of my game that uh, hasn't been quite to where I wanted it the past couple of years, just kind of being the, the top guy, I guess you could say in midget. And yeah, no, he helped me uh, develop that side of my game and just all around just helped me uh, uh, shape into what I want to become in a, as a pro. So he's just really helped me in that uh, side of things. Well, let's take a look at a goal you scored last season. It's against the Prince Albert Raiders, one of the many teams I played for in the Western Hockey League. Uh, we're going to play through it here. Just break down what you see and kind of just, you know, anything you can remember from this play. I think there, yeah, just, I remember it being kind of a broken play in the neutral zone coming our way. And I think it may have been early in a shift, but I was on the back check and I remember seeing five guys, four guys up the ice and, uh, me and McCartney there looked like we were on a two-on-one and yeah, no, pretty, pretty fortunate bounce in the neutral zone and to have it kind of bounce off my feet and off the PA guy's stick, uh, just landed on my stick in the slot and I just put it upstairs and yeah, no, they, they don't all come, uh, all come with skill, but a couple of nice bounces here and there sure help. Didn't even look across for the pass. Hey, you knew you were cutting to the net. You wanted to get a goal down that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was, I think we won. We won an OT that game. So I think it was a pretty low scoring game. So it kind of came at a big time there and it felt, uh, felt pretty good. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll have a few more of them this year. I think, you know, as you, each year you take, you progress, you get that much more trust in the coach and you move your way up the lineup. And you've had some teammates in Brandon last year. I mean, Ridley Grieg, Braden Schneider, that both players were drafted in the first round of the NHL draft and Braden Schneider ended up playing for team Canada. What is it like having those guys in the dressing room and what do you learn from those guys? Yeah, I think uh, both guys were just, just great teammates for me kind of coming into my first year and uh, obviously just unreal hockey players themselves. But um, yeah, I think I watched a lot of obviously Ridley just kind of, kind of being that guy ahead of me coming in the year before. And yeah, he's just, just carries himself with so much, uh, with so much skill and focus. And, um, he just brings a lot of grit to his game too. I know, I know that uh, a lot of people raved about his grit and, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think Ottawa fans will obviously love, love seeing that come into their, uh, organization. And then Braden is just, he, yeah, just kind of physically dominating over everyone that he plays against. And, uh, just, uh, such a good guy off the ice too. But when it comes to the ice, there's, there's definitely no friends out there. And, um, yeah, both just good guys to, to learn from and kind of uh, have them show you the ropes of Brandon. And it, it was just a really good season to be under those guys and uh, learning from them. Well, we've talked enough about Dave and Ridley and Braden, but what about you? What's the expectations and the goals that you're putting on yourself for this season? 
Yeah, no, I think I, I want to come back into Brandon with uh, all the, everything that I've learned and kind of bring it to my game. I think uh, I have the ability to come in and kind of be a, be a top six guy there this year. And that's what I'm pushing for. Yeah. I think just, just coming in and showing kind of what I, what I didn't get to show at the end of the season there. And uh, it was just a big learning experience last year. And uh, if I can just come in and, and play my game and, and just be confident with the puck and I think good things will come and uh, I'm excited for it. My last question for you is what do you miss most and what are you most looking forward to getting back to Brandon and experiencing? Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously it's not looking like there's uh playing in front of the fans, but um, I think just, just being every, showing up every day with the guys and uh, no matter if it's a practice or game, it always seems to be uh, always seems to be a competition in the locker room and on the ice and it just, just, just being around them, it, it creates such a lighter mood than uh, maybe being in the off season for the past 10 months. But uh, uh, no, and yeah, you just gotta, you just miss kind of those laughs and those uh, good times that you go through and just thinking back to like our couple win streaks. It's just such a, it's a feeling that you can't really put into words into like how, how practice is and how bus trips are. So just being with the guys, obviously I'm missing it and I hope to be back to it soon. It's a, it's a fulfilling feeling. It's a lot of work, but you feel fulfilled. You feel good. And Jake talking with you, it's not surprised that uh, whenever your name gets brought up, they say future captain of the Brandon Wheat Kings. It absolutely could be in your future. Uh, I wish you the best. Stay safe, stay healthy and keep on grinding. Thank you again. Yeah, Thank you. That means a lot. It was a uh, good t- chatting with you. Thanks to Jake for taking time out of his day. Our next interview, our next conversation is with the top defenseman on the Kamloops Blazers from the 2019-2020 season. Today I am joined by Kamloops Blazer defenseman Montana Onibuchi. He last season was named the Blazers' top defenseman. He was an assistant captain. He's coming into his 20-year-old season this year. He's already in Kamloops getting ready for the start of this season. Montana, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Some good weather here. Um, got some good skates going. Been in, been in Kamloops now for a while. Yeah, it's been good working out, skating. Well, when you look back on these past 10 months, we've had a lot of time, obviously, as you know. Uh, what have you been doing to fill the time? And have you been able to stay on the ice during uh, the break that we've had? Or have you had to find other ways to stay in shape and stay engaged? Yeah, for so for the beginning, like, there wasn't too much ice because I was from Winnipeg, right? So the ice there was they kind of shut everything down for a bit. So yeah, I just, I was rollerblading, shooting pucks, just working out, had a little home gym. So I was working out there. And then when everything started opening up again, we, I went back to the gym and started training and then get on the ice. And yeah, I've been, I've been on the ice now for probably about like four months for sure. Well, you're going to be ready to go once the season actually starts here. I mean, when you look back on your career so far, you played 237 games in the Western Hockey League, 17 goals and 46 points for 63 total points. I should say, sorry, 17 goals and 46 assists for 63 points. Like I said in the intro, you were named the Camelot Blazers top defenseman last season. Why do you think they named you the top defenseman? What do you do so well that makes you such a valuable player for the Camelot Blazers organization? Uh, personally, I just don't think there's there's many guys like me like that, that play the D. I play I play hard. I play I play aggressive. I'm I'm confident when I'm out there, right? So I just think uh, there's not many too too many guys like me. You know what I mean? So just I, I bring a different I guess asset to the game. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. And what do you think is the area that you've developed the most that has made you into the top defenseman and one of the top defensemen in the BC division? Um, I think just this is my reads. I, 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 I think the game pretty quick. So I just, I just know the plays to make and I make a, the right decisions before when I was, when I was younger, I might, might've rushed things. And, but now I just, I know just to settle it down, believe in yourself and just have the confidence to make the right play. Well, Montana, right now we're currently in Black History Month. You're obviously a black player in the Western Hockey League. There's not very many uh, black players in the CHL if we're being completely transparent. And what, when you look at this month, you've been vocal about the Black Lives Matter movement, obviously, that happened uh, last season, actually, right as our season ended and, and the protests that have happened through this summer and into this year. Uh, what does this month mean to you? For me, it means just it's, it's kind of a time to just kind of reflect on, on the past and just kind of see how far we've we've come right just and like all the dividing and like in the states and stuff right now and just all the the rioting and the, the rallies right just it's it's tough time right now because i feel like it's more divided now than it has been for a long time but i think 
with the elections and everything, I think after that it'll settle down and it'll just get back to normal. And, and with COVID, it's added pressure, right? So it's just emotions run high right now. So. Well, unfortunately for you, you've actually experienced uh, racism in hockey and even in the Western Hockey League. And, you know, I, I personally don't know what it's like to go through that. And I just want to know how you dealt with it and uh, kind of how it has affected you or how you've moved on from it and how you've grown from it. Yeah, like, like I've said in a, in a different interview, you know, it's like it's like when they say something, it, it hurts. It hurts in that moment and it's hard to control it because it's like you're just angry about it. It's like, you will like, why you say, they say it out of hate. Right. So it's for me, it hurts, but eventually, you know, it heals. Like you get over it. It's whatever. Like at the end of the day, he's, he's obviously that who the player that said it or whatever is obviously insecure about something. And people just, people hate for no reason. So. I think in that interview too, you pulled a Will Smith quote where he said, uh, racism isn't going away. It's just being filmed. And I love that. That's a great quote. And it's so true, especially now. I mean, call these people out when they do it. Let's get it out of society, get it out of the culture for sure. And as you look ahead to this season, you're an assistant captain last season, you're going to have a bigger leadership role on the team this year. Uh, you know, what do you guys need to do to be a successful team? You guys were expected to be one of the best teams in the Western Hockey League already, but what do you guys need to do in this condensed season to actually pull it off and be the best honestly i, th I think I've, I've seen some of the boys i've talked to the boys and they all look lights out like everybody's ready to go bigger stronger faster so honestly i i think our chances are super high i think we're one of the best teams in the chl so i think we'll be fine when you came over from Everett to the Camelos Blazers, there's a lot of talent on this team. You know, you got Connor Zary, who's first round pick, played for Team Canada. Uh, Oren Senatazo, sorry if I said his name wrong. And then Logan Stankoven, who's coming up. He's one of your 16, 17s last year. What's it like to be around those guys and the practice against those guys and just see their development as they come through the system? No, it's awesome. They're all super good players and they all are super competitive. And in the practice, all the boys just love battling. So like there might be a little couple fights in practice, not, not real fights, but like banter. Right. So even that it just makes it more intense. So we take it to the games and we're all ready to go. Now, I know it's kind of a loaded question. It's a difficult question, but uh, as you prepare here, you're in your last season of junior hockey eligibility, you have the opportunity to potentially go play pro. You've also got the WHL scholarship. Is that something that you've been thinking about during this time, or is it more something you're going to wait till the end of the season and let things play out as they go? Yeah, I think it's just that, like, I'm, I'm taking it day by day. I'm not going to be living in the future. You know, I'm just going to start just try to stay in the present. Right. So um, I, my, my goal is to play, play pro. So I hope so. But whatever happens, happens. And I'm just going to go play out, go, go out there and play hard. Well, Montana, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. You were, uh, you know, you're in good company being named one of the top defensemen on the Camelos Blazers. Your head coach also won that award while he was, I mean, sorry, your assistant coach, uh, Daryl Sador, also won that award while he was with the Blazers, Scott Niedermeyer, and a few others. So you're well on your way, and I wish you the best of luck as we get ready to start this season. Thank you very much. Always fun talking with our 20-year-old players, getting their insights on what they are going to do at the end of this season. There's so much opportunity for them. It's just interesting to hear where they're at and how they're thinking about the rest of their lives and their future. Up next, we have our last conversation. It is with 17-year-old forward for the Red Deer Rebels, Jaden Group. Today, I'm joined by Red Deer Rebels forward and former Calgary Bisons captain at AMBHL player of the year which is the mvp award of that league it's now been renamed to the u15 triple a league in the alberta elite hockey league but it is red deer rebels forward Jaden groove Jaden, how are you doing doing good how are you i'm doing great we're in a quarantine right now here in alberta uh you know what are you doing right now to stay active and to stay sharp for the start of the season um not too much just out on the backyard rink and the outdoor rink with buddies and then uh just at home workouts and zoom workouts through the team. So that's about it right now. Well, Jaden, let's look back at last season for yourself In 57 games, you had six goals and 23 assists for 29 points. You're a big body player. You, you know, you use your size to your advantage, but when you came into the Western hockey league, what do you think was the biggest adjustment for your game that you had to make? Yeah, I think just, uh, the speed and the plays that everything's made at and, uh, kind of playing more of a complete two-way game. I think, especially for Brent, uh, that's a big thing for us is just playing more of a two-way game and solid defensively. 
Yeah, you guys had a young team and you did play for Brent Sutter, of course. What is it like playing for yeah. such an accomplished coach there in Red Deer? Yeah, no, I uh, I really enjoyed it in my first year. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge and he's uh, someone that you definitely want to listen to and kind of take everything you can from him and kind of listen to him when he's telling you what to do, especially uh, just how long he played and uh, his experience, I guess. You know, when you look at yourself and you go back to last season, you know, you played in 57 games. When you look at the difference in the type of player you were from game one to game 57, where do you think you grew the most as a player? Um, I think just being more of a complete two-way player, uh, down low, being a centerman, uh, D-zone face-offs, kind of all around the ice, just a more two-way player for myself and kind of grew uh, confidence in that way, being able to be put out in more uh, different situations, I guess, uh, during the game, kind of end of the game, start, start of the period, kind of different stuff like that. So I kind of gained confidence through that, being a stronger two-way player, I guess. Well, we're going to see a big confidence play from you here right now. It's a, it's a really nice goal. It's actually your first ever goal you scored in the Western Hockey League. But uh, just take us through this play and just kind of break down what happens here and kind of what you see on this goal. Um, yeah, so I remember this one. Uh, I don't know whose stick it was sitting there, but I remember seeing it earlier in the shift, and I kind of kind of had to make a move around the stick sitting there and not uh, bump into it, but I kind of just go to shot from right there's a little blocker, so that's kind of saw it a little open, just kind of ripped it there, so that's about it. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed in that clip. I mean, it's your hockey IQ is obviously very good if you identified that stick earlier in the shift and then you knew it was there. You can tell in the clip that you obviously see the stick, you make a move. But when you make a move on that stick, it forces that goalie just off a little bit to the left-hand side and opens up right yeah. where you shot on the right-hand side low blocker. It's just, uh, you know, is, is that an area where I saw another goal of yours too, actually, where you pulled a little toe drag through the middle on Coltrane Wilson. Again, on Lethbridge, you seem to like to score on them uh specifically but it yeah. is is coming off the wing with the puck a strong suit in your, of your game not too much for me just being a centerman I don't get that chance a lot but I guess when I do I kind of like to try and change the angle a bit rather than just coming straight down so kind of get the goalie moving a little bit if I do get that opportunity coming from the wall when I rarely do I guess you know, when you look at this season it's going to be a shortened season of course you know what are your goals and what are your expectations um, I think just for me, I'm I'm just expecting for myself to come and compete every night and not take a shift or game off. Just being that short short schedule, it's uh, it's pretty important to bring it every night and not uh, not take any shifts off or anything off because uh, everyone's watching every shift and every game because that's the only only time they get to watch us this year. So it's pretty important to bring it every night, I guess. When you look at your Rebels team, you guys were the youngest team in the Western Hockey League this year. Now everybody's a year older. You've got some, some new players coming in. You know, what do you think your role on the Red Deer team is this season? I think just being a strong two-way centerman uh, with me and me and King down the middle there, I think we'll have a good uh, good top six or even all our forwards will be a lot better this year with everyone gaining that year of experience and uh just being able to bring a physical presence and kind of lead the guys through the middle of the ice there and be a big presence on the forecheck and kind of bring a different uh, aspect to the game for our team. Again, we're coming back to the shortened season. It's going to be a, a different year for sure, but is there a rink in the Alberta division that uh, you enjoy playing in outside of the Centrium there in Red Deer? Um, I'd guess, uh, Rogers place down in Edmonton. is pretty nice. That's, that's probably the nicest one to go there. I guess the saddle dome too, from being from Calgary is pretty sweet to go down there, uh, every couple of weeks or once a month down playing there where I grew up watching games and stuff. Well, Jade, my last question for you, obviously you've had a lot of time off during this, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Has there been a, a hobby, a skill, a new sport or something you've started during this pandemic that's helped you get through it? Um, I got pretty into golf this year, uh, in the spring and summer, I played quite a bit with buddies after, after workout and, uh, skate in the morning, then all afternoon had off. So quite a bit of golf this year, actually.
Well, Jaden, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. Wish you the best of luck as you get ready to go back up to Red Deer and get started with the, uh, you know, the, the unique WHL season we're going to have. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. A big thank you this week to Jake Chason, Montana Onibuchi, and Jaden Groove for taking time out of their weeks to sit down and have a conversation with me. I am sure they are super excited to get this season rolling. We have got approval in several of our territories. We've got a couple more to go, but the WHL is coming back. Uh, we're looking forward to it. My name is Zach Cotter. I'm the manager of player development for the Western Hockey League. You can find me on Twitter at Zach Cotter. You can follow the Western Hockey League at the WHL. We will drop another episode next Wednesday. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of this week as well as your weekend. We'll talk soon. Hope to see you.